Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video. In today's video we're going to be having a look at a brand that I have never looked at on this channel, Doogee. I think that's how you pronounce it, unless it's Doogee. I think it's Doogee. We'll go with Doogee. I was contacted by Gearbest and they asked me if I would like to have a look at a sample product and join their affiliate program and I said, sure, why not? Uh, they suggested a phone that I wasn't quite sure I wanted to have a look at, so I opted for a cheaper one, and that's the one we're going to have a look at today. But just a disclaimer and everything, um, the link for this device is in the description below, but if you click that link and do purchase this device, if it does end up being good or if it's something that you like, um, I do receive some sort of commission. I'm not too sure how it works or how much it is or anything like that, but I just want to give you a full disclaimer that if you do, that's what happens. Um, I don't think clicks count, but I think purchases count. So click as many times as you want. I really don't know. Anyways, let's get on with it. So we are having a look at the Doji BL5500 Lite, which is currently on Gearbest right now for $69.99 USD, which is about 110 Australian. The regular retail price is 130 USD, which is about $200 Australian. At its regular retail price, it seems a little bit too expensive, but at its current sale price of 70 US, it doesn't seem like a bad option. So what exactly are we getting for the money? The main specifications are a MediaTek MTK6739 CPU, which is a quad core. We have two gigs of RAM. We have 16 gigs of internal storage with up to an additional 64 gig via a micro SD card. We have a 5,500 milliamp hour battery with unfortunately no quick charge support. It is what it is. We are running Android 8.1. We have a 6.19 inch 1500 by 720 IPS panel with a notch, which may throw people off, but once I have the product in hand, we'll see what it looks like. It has a 19 by 9 aspect ratio, and the glass is protected by Gorilla Glass 3. The cameras are a 13 megapixel Sony IMX135 main camera, as well as an 8 megapixel sub camera, which should be a, just a depth sensor, I'd say. The front camera is a 5 megapixel one. The GPU is an IMG 8XE IPPC, what it says accordingly. Dual SIM support as well, it supports 2G, 3G and 4G, and I'll show all the bands that are supported by the device just here. It has a rear fingerprint scanner, a headphone jack, and the color I chose is black. The weight and the dimensions of the phone are also here as well for you to have a read. Looking at the pictures and the listing of it, it seems like a very budget oriented device, but once I have the product in hand, I'll be able to make further judgments. There's also this one picture I just love, BL5500 Lite, be long time. I'm going to be doing a battery test as well, so we'll see how long it lasts. Now, with shipping labels on both sides of the parcel, so I'll have to do it as a side shot, just like this, it's fine. I was able to get this ordered on the 13th of the 3rd, and it arrived on the 4th of the 5th. So, it almost took two months to arrive from China. To be fair, I did order it right about the time when things started to get a little bit wacky in the world. So, that's why it kind of took a little bit of time. And don't worry, this has been sitting around my house for like the last couple of weeks, so it should be fine. With all that being said and done, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get. Obviously a phone, but I'll be, I'll be hopeful. Oh, I just sliced through the box and the bubble wrap. That's okay. So, covered in a layer of bubble wrap, which I sliced through. That's okay. Easy access, no worries. We get a box. Hey, thumbs up. <laughs> I like that. Doogee, or Doogie, B Long Time, BL Series, Thumbs Up, BL5500 Lite. Nothing on the side except this burgundy brownie Doogie, and yep, and Doogie. And then on the back has the specifications, as we know, the model number being the BL5500 Lite, with Android 8.1 Oreo MT6739WA, oh, it didn't say WA on the website, that's okay, 5500 milliamp hour battery, 13 megapixel plus 8 megapixel camera, the 6.19 inch unitch display, fingerprint, trademarks, all that sort of stuff, color black, and the IMEI info is just slapped on the back, just like so. Fairly standard box, nothing interesting, so popping it open. That was not a good flip we get the device itself, which has a bit of heft to it. Okay, we get this foam piece, and then we have this cardboard piece, and then we also get a free case with an included SIM eject tool. We also have the official charger here, which is not from my country. I think this is European, it should be. And the specifications show that this is just a five volt at one amp. And obviously from what I can gather, it does not support quick charge, which for a 5,500 milliamp hour battery, charging it from 0% to 100% is probably gonna take a long time if you use a five volt two amp charger. I mean, it might not be that long, but 
I'll have to test it out. We got a USB cable, which is a micro USB cable, unfortunately. So for a budget device, I guess they had to cut some corners, but look, micro USB is fine for the most part. It has been reliable over the last however many years. We do get an instruction manual in several different languages, um, but I don't think we'll need to touch on any of that. I should be fine. We also get a warranty card as well, which I don't think I'll need. Uh, more alcohol wipes, as well as a screen protector. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing. We don't get headphones either. A bit strange. Usually they do come with headphones, but that's okay. Um, I'll leave the case out. I may as well chuck the case on it. Device. We need to take the plastic off, like so. I could have done that really, you know, violently, but got to be careful with technology. The notch does look quite minimal just here but I don't think it is. Uh, specifications just on the front, as we all know. Coming to the back, it is this very cheap plastic back. But as I said, they've had to cut corners, so I understand that. We have the rear-mounted fingerprint scanner just at the top. We have our dual camera setup just there as well, our top one being the 13 megapixel and the bottom one being the 8 megapixel one. Looks like a single LED flash just in between it as well. Now that setup does look very similar to the iPhone X camera setup, which I have one just here. And as you can see, they definitely do look alike. We do have a sticker with all the information, IMEI, serial number, and all that good stuff there, as well as the Doogee branding. At the top of the device, we have a headphone jack, which is always good. The side of the device has the volume rockers, as well as the power button, which has grooves in it. We've got a micro USB port on the bottom, as well as two speaker grills, but I think there's only one speaker included in this. Around the device, you can see these antenna bands just around the plastic frame. Um, kind of reminds me of a J-series Samsung, to be fairly honest. It feels like there's a bit of empty space in here. But when we tear it down, we'll get to see the inside of it. All right, let's take off this screen protector. There we go. And there we go. Now I would apply a screen protector, but I'm absolutely horrible at applying them. So I'm gonna have to just leave it as is. At the bottom, we do have some doji branding. You can also just see the bottom chin in there as well. Moving to the top of the device, you can see the notch, but we'll get a better look once the phone is powered on. We have a front camera just here, as well as our earpiece, and that's basically it. Keep in mind that this device was released late 2018, early 2019, which kind of justifies the appearance of it. And popping the SIM tray out, we don't have a rubber ring around it or anything like that because this is not water resistant or anything like that. So don't drop it in water, obviously. Uh, we get support for two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and a micro SD card. I'll put a micro SD card as well as a nano SIM in. I just want to quickly scratch up the screen with a razor blade to see if we do have glass. And it appears so. I can't make any visible marks on the screen, so we should be all good. It's time to power up the Doogee BL5500 Lite and see what it's capable of. Beautiful. Oh, the chin looks a little bit bigger than I anticipated. Just a little bit. All right, we now have a setup screen, so I'll go ahead and set the device up and we'll continue on. Okay, wireless update. Yes, yes. Because we want to see if we can actually get an update on this thing. And that's it. There it all is. So obviously we want to have a look at the chin just there, which, as I said, a little bit bigger than I thought. Just having a look at the notch on the iPhone X compared to the Doogee one. Obviously, the Doogee one is much bigger, but comparing the chin size on the iPhone 10 as opposed to the Doogee, obviously, you can see some differences. I know the two devices are a completely different ballpark right now, but people say, oh, the Apple bezels are so big and stuff, but honestly, like, that's not that bad at all. I mean, considering that's a flagship and this is a budget device, you know, there's some differences. All right, anyways, enough for rambling. Let's get into it. So we have Android 8.1 on this. Swiping down, we have all our shortcuts, just like so. And it appears to be a fairly stock version of Android 8.1, and I would say it is. We've got our basic apps just here. Uh, we've got Face Unlock as well, which would be good to test. But with these being basically the stock apps here, we don't have to go too in-depth with all of these. We basically want to see the camera, speaker, YouTube, internet, um, gaming, and all that sort of stuff. We don't really need to see the calculator or the clock or anything like that. We do want to see settings, though. So we'll jump straight into settings. 
Network and internet. Uh, do we have any NFC? No, we don't. Uh, we do have 4G connectivity up the top there, and the signal strength is just about right for where I am in Australia. We've got connected devices with Bluetooth, apps and notifications. We'll just see if we can have a look at the apps installed. Like so, I'll just scroll through here and just see if there's anything that may look a bit off. I don't think there would be, because Doogee seems like a pretty reputable brand, so I don't think there'd be anything dodgy going on, but someone may tell me otherwise in the comments below. But everything that I'm going to be saying in this review is all my opinions. I'm not going to hold back if I find something wrong with the device. I'll point it out straight away, as I always do. Um, Launcher 3 and Location EM2. They always look weird to me. That's just me, anyways. Um, but otherwise, I don't think... QR code scan just there as well. Um, I've got the wireless updates here as well. Uh, battery, we have 98% left. It doesn't tell us how many days we've got, but being a 5500 milliamp hour, I'm pretty sure I should be able to get two days out of this, no worries at all, considering the low specifications in this device, it shouldn't use up too much power. In display, we can change the brightness level and all that sort of stuff. We'll have a look at the wallpapers uh, just here. Have a look at the default ones and choose one that I think, oh, that does look nice, but it hides the notches. I'm going to do that one. Further into display, we can actually change the navigational bar. So I can change the button combination to have the back button as first or whatever. We can hide it altogether to have a more full screen experience. In sound, it all looks pretty usual. We do have the sound enhancement, which is always on MediaTek devices. In storage, we have our 16 gigs of internal storage with five gigs used already for the system um, and my SD card, which is eight gigabytes. We have DuraSpeed as well, which that just clears up the phone's memory and kills background tasks, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Our security and location will obviously come back to this, but we can choose face unlock or fingerprint or whatever. Accounts, we can add an account, which we'll do later. In accessibility, all looks the same here, nothing to report. We do have a dedicated option for fingerprint just here, so I'll probably use this one. You can actually use the fingerprint for certain other gestures. For example, if you touch the fingerprint scanner, you can return back to the main screen or music player or home screen if you hold it. So that's a very interesting feature. Some fingerprint scanners that I have come across on other phones do use this, but it is good to see this implemented on something like this. Uh, gesture motion, telephony motion. Oh, okay, so you can flip it over to silence it. All good. Three finger screenshot. Yep, I've seen that before. Oh, what was the other one just there? Smart Somato Sensory. I'm not too sure what that is. Maybe it's... Ah, it'd probably be that, I'd say. We have fast capture here, which off screen state, double the volume up or volume down, take pictures. Okay, just a shortcut to take screenshots. Scan code, that's our QR scanner. In mobile broadcasts, it's the emergency alert history. There's no alerts, so that's good. Uh, Google, all the usual Google stuff, I would assume. And coming into system, languages and input, we'll see if we can change the keyboard. I don't think we can, just Gboard, yep. That's fine. In About Phone, we can see the model number. Doogee OS version is version 2.0. Android is 8.1. Uh, we can see the build numbers and kernel versions, all that good stuff. I've enabled developer options as well, because we can have a look through them. Uh, we'll have a look at the Easter egg as well, which is Oreo. I can't remember what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, that's right. Him. Oh, he's a little laggy. Oh, there he is. There we go. All right, I'm going to connect up to Wi-Fi. We'll see if we can do a system update, and then we'll test the fingerprint, face unlock, and then have a look at the apps. Okay, connecting to Wi-Fi. We'll see if we can do an update. See if anything comes up for it. Uh, we do. We have a 44 meg update. That's surprising. Okay, the update's downloaded. I'll go ahead and install it, and we'll see if there's any other updates available for this device. For the system update installs, I'll just touch on build quality again. Obviously the back is completely plastic, the frame's plastic and everything like that. As for thickness, it's not too thick, and holding it in my hands is quite comfortable. And checking for any other updates shows that our device is currently up to date, so we're all good. Just going to have a quick look at the screen. I can see some discoloration just around the edging of the panel, and especially just up the top with the notch area. I can see some slight LCD discoloration just around the notch area. But it's not too noticeable, it's only if you look up close and personal with it, but otherwise it's fine. All right, so it's time to test the fingerprint as well as the face unlock. But first I wanna test the fingerprint functions, like touching the fingerprint scanner will go back to the previous screen, and if we touch and hold, it will go to the home screen. So if I go, yep, yeah, okay, goes back. All right, so we'll come back into it, and hold. That, yeah, that works. Changing another setting if we hold, 
brings up the tasks window, which nothing is open. Uh, we have 686 megs free of 2 gigs of RAM. Oh, there you go. It took a little bit of time to show up there, but that's all right. All right, I'll set up the fingerprint scanner and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we've enrolled our fingerprint, so we'll go ahead and lock it. There we go. You know what, it's actually reasonably fast. Not the fastest one I've ever seen, but it unlocks pretty quickly. Try another finger just to make sure. Nope, that's all good. Alright, I'll go ahead and try face unlock and see how that goes. With that enrolled, it's currently looking for my face, so I'll just stare at it. There we go. I'll just try that again. To not stooge anyone up, I'll just hold it like that. Beautiful. I'll open up the phone dialer just quickly, because we'll try the call quality on this. We'll have a look at the IMEI info, which is all displayed there. All good. Alright, I'll give it a call and see how it sounds. Testing the call quality. Seems pretty good. The earpiece is nice and loud and very clear, so I do like that. In terms of the user interface so far, it seems pretty good. Everything opens nice and quickly. Don't know why I opened that first. And it doesn't seem to be lagging that much. For a device that only has 2 gigs of RAM and just a low-end quad-core, it should be fine for most daily tasks. But obviously, we've got to try gaming on it and some other benchmarks as well and see how it fares out. Alright, well, let's jump straight into camera then. And there it is. So we do have a couple of options, which actually this camera layout here looks exactly like the S20 Ultra 5G clone that I recently just had a look at with all of the functions just here. Photo, face beauty, blur, all that sort of stuff. Except it has Panorama and Pro actually integrated into here as well. So the picture size is 13 megapixels, which is what we want. And the video, which is set to 1080p. We also have the option to toggle EIS on or off, which has gender icons just there as well. Just thought I'd point that out. And we'll check the front camera as well. I'm going like that, Smalls is definitely a camera. And we'll have a look and go to photo and see what our options are. And it says that our front camera is 5 megapixels. Alright, well I'm currently filming just after midnight, so obviously I can't take the usual photos and videos that I do. But tomorrow, if the weather's good, I will do that and splice in the footage for you all to have a look at. And I can also comment on the features and the camera and all that sort of stuff as well. Testing the video quality on the Doogee BL5500 Lite. The frogs are in a bit of a strange position because I've had a gardener come here and like completely destroy my garden and he moved these and I don't know where they're supposed to go so um, I'll have to figure that out. That's okay, just for now. This is temporary, it's all good. Here we go, pressing the screen, does an autofocus and that's what it looks like. I've done a test with EIS on and off. It does work. There's pretty much all the flowers that I currently have in the garden at the moment. Nothing special. Bit of definition on this tree just here. It's like, it's all completely cleaned up. It's crazy. It needed to be done for like three years and now it's finally done. And coming along the brick wall as usual. Looks okay to me. Got to autofocus and there we go. Now you can see what's going on. And Stuart's just there. He got moved too. But he's back in the right spot, so it's all good. And at this point, I'd be like lemons, ground, and all that. But uh, basically, everything's gone. We have lemons, though. Ta-da! 
and then this is with eight times on and you can see it's quite jagged and stuff but it is only a digital zoom so you can't expect too much that's a loud car testing the doji bl5500 lights front camera this is uh the video i don't think it's anything special um maybe you can see some sort of details that i'm missing look how bare my garden is now there's just nothing here and i'm just crouching down like a slav because you know why not there's no sun or anything it's fine it's perfectly fine all right cool it works eis test uh this is without eis so I'll just do a pan just like so trying not to shake that's the whole point of it all right now we'll try it with it on okay and this is with eis on oh just jumped a little bit there seems to be doing something so I move like this you can see it trying to correct it so it does work to some degree sorry for anyone who suffers with motion sickness but I'm just giving you a rough idea that the EIS does work okay so it's a couple of days later I've done the camera test I've done a couple of standby tests and all that sort of stuff so we can continue on with the review however the secondary 8 megapixel camera on the back I have a feeling that its purpose may not be what we all think it might be for. In a normal photo, you can focus, it's fine. Um, but if you go to blur mode, it comes up with the same circle as I've said before. If you want to see the same picture from my S20 clone video, that's the same pictures are produced with one camera. So this does exactly the same thing. However, if you cover the secondary camera, it comes up with an error message saying make sure you're not covering the lenses before shooting, which makes sense. Even when covering it just like that, the blur effect is there. So I'm kind of wondering if that 8 megapixel camera is a dud, or maybe its use is unknown at this stage in time, I'm not too sure. I'd have to wait till we get to the teardown to see what's going on. But otherwise, the secondary camera doesn't help with zooming, any video stabilization, any focusing or anything like that because I've covered up the camera and I'll do it in the teardown as well. I've covered up the camera several times and tried it. And mostly everything else is fine except for blur. And it's not producing a true bokeh effect. So I'm having trouble sort of working out the differences here. And I've also tried open camera to see if I could swap to the secondary camera. And that does not work. I also tried open camera to see if I can film at 4K or 60fps. Neither option worked. 4K did not work and 60fps, even at 720p, did not want to work with open camera. And this is the latest version as well. So I'm out of options with that one. Camera wise, the photos and videos aren't bad. They're nothing special. They are decent. If you need a phone that just takes pictures, there you go. The front camera itself, not half bad, does the job as well. Otherwise, what's really getting me is that secondary camera on the back, so we'll get to that. But anyways, moving on from the camera, the battery test that I found with this device, I ended up getting 85 hours on standby with Wi-Fi and a SIM card that's active. From 100%, I got it down to 34% over 85 hours, which is quite impressive. There's it on the device itself, but here's a screenshot just in case you want to see that. Um, very impressive, very, very impressive. I'm actually quite happy with that. I also decided to charge the device up with a standard Samsung 5 volt 2 amp charger and from 0% to 100% it took 3 hours to charge from 0 to 100. So I don't think that's too bad. With quick charge obviously you'd probably get maybe an hour and a half to 100% but just with a standard 5 volt 2 amp charger if it's completely dead it'll take 3 hours to be back at 100%. Nothing spectacular in terms of charging but as for the battery itself, 85 hours and we got pretty much three quarters of the way of the battery capacity, I think that's quite good. So that's definitely a thumbs up from me from this one. But anyways, moving on, we've got a couple more things to have a look at. Now with all the pre-installed apps, we've pretty much had a look at the most relevant ones. So what I'm gonna do is move on to internet test, YouTube test, speaker test, a couple of games, and then we'll just check the specs just in case. And I'll leave the tear down for another video. Okay, with Google Chrome opened up, let's have a look at the website for this device. Why not? Now I have noticed, ever since I've put games and stuff like that on here, the device has slowed down quite considerably. It uh, takes a while to unlock. It's getting pretty laggy at this point in time. It's definitely far from being terrible. It's still usable, but I just thought I'd mention it, that it is getting quite slow in some regards. Opening up a website just here. Seems to be fine. No thank you. I wonder if they say if it has the secondary camera or not. Yes, it does. Okay. Well, 
I wonder what it does. But look, otherwise, I think internet browsing on this will be fine. But if you're going to be pushing the device with internet browsing, depending on what sites you're on that use a lot of background data and stuff like that, you might see a considerable amount of lag. As we all know, this only has two gigs of RAM and only a quad core processor, so it is nothing special. But the sites do load up fairly quickly and everything's quite usable. So that's a, that's a pass from me, I'd say. All right, performing the YouTube test on just one of my videos, let's bump the quality up to, let's go 720p because it's the highest. And I'll skip to somewhere where there's a bit of footage going on. So the rear camera here, it's just this little guy, no OIS or anything like that. There are some codes on the camera flex, but I'll have to look them up during editing and let you all know what they are. Uh, the front camera is just this little one just here. So I'll pop that out. So 720p YouTube video will be absolutely fine on this device. Let's take that a little bit further and try a 4K 60fps video on here and see how that goes. Once again, I'll use the Costa Rica in 4K 60fps video. I'll link this video down in the description below if you want to have a look at it. It is really a good video. I always recommend this video to have a watch because it's really, really nice and relaxing. Uh, 720p 60fps we can do. So not 4K, so we'll try 60fps and see how that goes at 720p. Oh, a little bit laggy there. Colors aren't too bad for the display. But yeah, it's starting to lag. I figured as much. We are dealing with a budget device, so we can't expect too much, but 720p YouTube videos will be fine. Um, and that's all you can play on this will be 720p because the display is only a 720p one. Uh, 1080p videos, I mean, you might be able to force 1080p onto this, but I'm not too sure how that would go. Next up is the speaker test, so let's see how this goes. And of course, we'll be using some of Mick Gordon's songs from Doom Eternal, um, some of my hand-picked ones that I like the most, so we'll give these a go. All right, next up is BFG 10,000. That is not BFG 10,000. What have I done? Next up, we were using BFG Division 2020. I meant to put BFG 10K on this, but I kind of mixed that up. That's okay. And lastly, we'll kick it off with Doomed Hunter. So max, we got to 103 decibels, which is fairly average. Speaker-wise, this is nothing amazing. It is just a fairly low-end speaker, but it does definitely get the job done. And just to confirm, there is no dual speaker configuration. It's only just one bottom firing speaker, and the earpiece at the top does not function as a secondary speaker for any sorts of music or media. So far, things aren't looking too bad for this device. The battery life is excellent. The screen isn't half bad. The camera takes pretty acceptable pictures. Speaker is not too bad. Um, the Android 8.1 experience, while laggy at times, is pretty much usable. You know, so far things are good, but let's push it to the limit by trying some games on this and seeing how it handles it. Now, I've got a couple of different ones to try here. I've got Call of Duty, Crazy Taxi, GTA 3, and Minecraft. So, got a couple here to try, so let's go ahead and start off with Minecraft. I think that's just the random one I've picked, so we'll see how this one goes. Okay, with Minecraft at all its default settings on this device, seems to run... Pretty smooth. Looking up at the sky, it obviously becomes quite smooth. Looking down at the ground, it becomes quite smooth. When we see some of the background start to load in, it does become a little bit laggy, but it's not too bad, though. This is definitely far from being unplayable. Oh, animals. Let's go say hi to them. Hey, fellas. How are you? Boop. Boop. Sorry. Boop. Just trying to be friends. Okay, next up we have Crazy Taxi, which I'll basically just run into a bunch of things. So we'll see how this goes. Ooh, bit of lag there, it's alright.
Something wrong with the sound? The taxi doesn't sound too happy. Some sort of glitch going on with the audio, I'd say. Because I only turned the background music off. Sounds still working, but it's just glitching the car and everything else. But I've delivered my customer to their destination. They seem happy. And this experience seems to be a little bit iffy because the sound's not really working. At the moment, things are definitely playable. But I think when we get to GTA 3, and most notably Call of Duty, is when we're going to start to see the performance of the device just drop down considerably. Uh, unfortunately, GTA 3 does not want to launch. Okay, well, we'll just load Call of Duty and see what that does. Since I've used a different Gmail account, um, it doesn't have my Call of Duty save file on here. Uh, so I've had to do the tutorial level. And the graphics quality is all on low, and it's, you know what, it's not half bad so far. At the moment, the device is reasonably cool, so that's a good thing. Um, Performance-wise for this is not too bad, but I think when there's a lot of action on screen is when things are going to get a little bit laggy. Considering this is a fairly demanding game by mobile standards anyways, um, it doesn't run on any device that's less than 2 gigs of RAM. It's playable, it seems fine, but if you were to go online and multiplayer and all that sort of stuff, it's probably going to be a bit unplayable. But look, gaming-wise, it seems fairly reasonable. Don't expect 60 FPS in all your mobile games and stuff, but for occasional sort of 2D games or whatever, I think you'll be quite good with this. In that regards, let's run Geekbench 5 and see what score we get for our single-core and multi-core scores. As we can see, the model, OS, and CPU are all correct, so we'll run the benchmark and see what we get. Okay, the Geekbench 5 score is in, with 104 for single core and 335 for our multi-core score. And if we scroll down, we can start to see the specifications, which are all correct. Just remember that that's Geekbench 5, so obviously the scores are going to be completely different from Geekbench 4. But to be on fair grounds, I'm going to install Geekbench 4, that I ran on the S20 Ultra clone, and we'll see what that comes up with. Okay, and the Geekbench 4 scores are in with 594 single core and 1608 for the multi-core score. I'll go back and compare it with some other phones like the Yuma DigiPower 3, for example, the Ucatel C17 Pro. I'll have a look and see what scores I got from those devices um, and compare it with this, but I have a feeling that this is probably the lowest I have seen with both Geekbench 4 and 5 as well. Disregard all of the clone devices, all of the ones that I've actually done a full review on that are, you know, name brands and sort of thing. Uh, this is probably the lowest I've seen. While the Geekbench scores do say that, yeah, we do have pretty low specs in this thing, it's still reasonable. So I'll open up system info app as well as device specs and we'll have a look at the specs just quickly just to double check that everything's all correct but yeah look everything in here seems to be all correct and i don't doubt that any of the specifications are incorrect it all seems to be fairly good but let's see what the cameras say actually that's what i'm interested in so the camera says 16 megapixels for the back doesn't say anything else for a secondary one it's got a lot of values there the front camera is 6 megapixels. Alright. We'll try uh, System Info. See what that comes up with. Battery capacity does say 100 milliamp hours, but it's definitely 5500. I can confirm that. Camera say 13 megapixel for the back one, which is correct, and then 5 megapixel for the front one, which is pretty much correct, but no signs of the secondary camera coming up anywhere. So that is still a bit of a concern. Well, at this point in time, I'm pretty much satisfied that I've went through everything and I've tested everything that I need to. I've tested the cameras, gaming, seen the specs, internet tests, YouTube, all that sort of thing, and I'm fairly happy with everything that I've seen. This is a budget device, and you definitely can't expect much for the price. With it being currently $70 on Gearbest on flash sales at the moment, but it will be $130 US as its regular retail price, I think the retail price is a bit too high. At its flash deal sale at $70, it's not a bad deal. You get a decent camera, decent display, you get 4G, dual SIM, you get a high capacity battery with good standby. We do have a pretty much stock Android 8.1 experience, but it does start to get laggy once you put a bit of multitasking and stuff like that on it. It doesn't have the best specs in the world, but if you need something that's cheap, has good battery, this might be something to look at. Then again, if it's not on sale at its flash deal price, 
you're probably better off going with a Xiaomi device, um, even their budget ones that start at like $100. I believe they have USB-C as opposed to micro USB on this and probably offer a lot better features than this does. But look, if you're just in the market for something cheap that has a high capacity battery and you don't really mind spec-wise or whatever, just to make calls and texts, this might be all right. Might be all right to have a look at. But for anything serious as a daily driver with heavy multitasking, gaming, and all that sort of stuff, obviously a budget device like this is not going to do that. But it's been a reasonable experience and I've only had the occasional lag with the OS and games obviously not launching and all that sort of thing. But look, it's a budget device. You get what you pay for. That's pretty much what it all sums up to is that you get what you pay for and here it is. This has been the BL5500 Lite and you're probably wondering about the teardown. I'm going to be doing that in another video because I want to investigate the secondary camera. So I'm going to do a teardown and investigating the camera in the next video. So I just want to cover all the main stuff that I needed to cover in this video here. So that is what I've done. And I hope that I have covered everything to everyone's satisfaction. And if I have missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. But of course, I just want to thank Gearbest for sending this sample out to me for review. And of course, the link is in the description if you do want to check it out. And as I've said at the beginning of the video, if you do purchase this device, I will get a small commission. So I'm just letting you know as a bit of a disclaimer. Um, but completely up to you. If you feel this device is okay for you, go for it. If not, look somewhere else. This video was all my opinion and how I felt with this device, but if you have this device already and you feel different about it, let me know as well down in the comments. Otherwise, this is going to wrap up the review of the Doji BL5500 Lite device, and hopefully it hasn't gone too long like all my other videos. But hopefully in the teardown slash investigation, we get to find out what that secondary camera is used for, and that will be linked in the description as well as carded up here as well the whole time. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. I hope you found this entertaining or informative, whatever the case may be. And as always, be good people, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. I had the case on the entire time. Free case is cool. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.